Oh hi, I'm the heretic. In discussing the merits of a voluntary society, skeptical people will often ask questions about certain aspects of a society and how it will function in the absence of a state. Questions like, how will the courts or law enforcement work? How will a voluntary society defend itself from hostile foreign powers? You might have asked these questions yourself at one point, or had them brought up to you. Now, they are good questions, of course. If we are to have a society, that is to say, a complex network of social relationships in a population, then the needs that are currently fulfilled by the state will still need to be filled. The problem is that if we become so accustomed to this role being filled by the government, it's difficult to imagine alternatives that would come about in a free market. People even mistakenly believe the government is the only institution capable of fulfilling these needs. Without it, we couldn't get these things at all. An old Soviet joke went like this. So one woman waiting in the Soviet bread line says to the woman in front of her, Wow, can you believe how long these lines are? Yeah, the other woman replies. But in capitalist America, the government doesn't even provide bread. You might have heard this parable before, but it illustrates my point. If government is the only institution that provides these services, arguments against the state's existence sound like arguments against the existence of those services entirely. Of course we don't oppose the existence of those services, just that the government shouldn't have a monopoly on it. Even so, most people live busy lives, and they can't take time to contemplate how certain services will work without the state. It's completely reasonable that they would ask how these services might work. While fundamentally, I don't know, because I am not a central planner, I can give guesses, based on my own thinking and reading from other thinkers, to help alleviate other people's anxiety about a stateless society. While I personally might not know how best to provide these services, I know that a free market is how we find out. But there's a problem that tends to arise in these discussions. I call it the one billion nukes problem. It tends to go a little something like this. So what if there's an evil state that wants to take over your voluntary society? Why would they? It's more profitable for them to trade with us, and conquest would harm their economy in both the short and long term, through both the secession of trade, as well as the direct cost of warfare, which can get- But what if the state really hates you and wants your land? Property owners won't want to be enslaved by a foreign government and have an incentive to defend their property and their families from foreign conquest. Without government restrictions, civilians will be able to own higher-grade weaponry. Plus, there will be a massive economic demand for militias to defend society from foreign invaders. How do we know they'll beat the foreign state, though? The foreign state's military is bigger, better funded, and has more power. The Vietnam War and the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan have shown how effective asymmetric warfare can be against states with vastly stronger militaries. Plus, given that a voluntary society will not have its technology sector held back by economic restrictions or taxation, the invaders will face guerrilla fighters armed with the most advanced weaponry the world has ever seen. But, 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 but what if a billion nukes were falling on your society? What then, huh? Checkmate, anarchists. The discussion starts with the whataboutism, which is fine, but as their concerns are addressed, the hypothetical scenario being discussed devolves into increasingly unrealistic situations designed to put more pressure on a voluntary society, the objective being to put enough pressure that the only logical solution to the problem is for a coercive monopoly to step in and solve this problem. But how is a state going to protect society from a billion nukes? It isn't. They're toast with the rest of us. As a competitive market is necessarily going to produce goods and services superior to a coercive monopoly, which can only produce goods by producing bads first, any scenario devised will find the market alternative superior to the monopoly product. However, this attempt to create a scenario in which a free market is incompetent displays similar ineptitude in the government. No, a voluntary society will not be able to protect itself against a billion nukes, barring some kind of technology we can't conceive of yet. A state wouldn't be able to do so either. As such, the billion nukes problem 
is a hypothetical scenario in which a voluntary society fails, the same failure must also apply to the state. The billion nukes problem doesn't just apply to the military question. Consider this scenario. How would someone in a voluntary society get food if they're impoverished, unable to work, have no family members, have no assets to trade, and there's no charitable institutions or people in the local area or on the internet, and there's no charity farms or food kitchens? Will they just starve to death? Clearly, government-provided food wouldn't help this guy either, as in this scenario, he's immune to getting help. You can replace food with any good or service in the economy. Hell, when writing this script, I originally wrote it as healthcare, but food showcases the extent to which this would be a non-issue in a free society since we already get food through the market. In fact, food is so widely available, even in our half-fast market system, that more people die of overeating than starvation. There was no reason to believe the same wouldn't be true for any necessary good or service, even by ones the government traditionally provides. We already know that if the government didn't monopolize their services, they'd be out-competed, which is why they made competition illegal, and why they need to fund it with stolen money. Nobody would voluntarily trade with them otherwise, and without competitive pressures, any economic firm, not just the state, wouldn't cut cost wouldn't innovate or iterate their modes of production, and they would bureaucratize as their size increases. The idea that even in the most narrow, specific, and niche of examples, the state would outcompete a free market is ludicrous. Now, I should be fair. People making these arguments aren't always arguing in bad faith. Most of the time, they're defaulting to their preconceived notions. After all, they're familiar. They're safe. Voluntarism is uncharted waters, and new travelers can't be expected to take the plunge on my insistence. The people who are playing gotcha and arguing in bad faith should be immediately obvious to spot. But people with genuine curiosity should be fostered, welcomed as fellow travelers. They aren't wrong to feel anxious about new ideas, but they should rest easy because we have answers. That said, being a voluntarist means being cursed with answering the same questions over and over and over and over and over again. Part of the reason why I make the videos that I do is because when someone asks the same question again, I can just link them these, and they can get my views. They might not necessarily agree with me, but that's fine, just as long as they see where I'm coming from. Now, fundamentally, these what-if scenarios are unimportant. Figuring out who will build the roads after the state is gone is like figuring out how cotton will be picked after the U.S. abolishes slavery. The state is ethically unjustifiable and cannot be permitted to exist. We do not make exceptions to this rule just because you can't figure out how to lay down a long, flat thing. The trouble is that these ethical arguments do not alleviate anyone's anxiety. The issue is any scenario devised to prove the incompetence of a voluntary society also proves a state incompetent. This is the billion nukes problem. Funnily enough, the inverse of the billion nukes problem is not true, and we can devise several scenarios in which the government is incompetent that the free market has no trouble providing. For example, what if the government needs a working website built and they have a budget of under $1 billion? Checkmate, statists. Questions? Comments? Critique? Any other scenarios in which the billion nukes problem applies? How often do you guys run into this problem? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.